Have you ever noticed that we rarely find it difficult to trust God when things are going smoothly and the circumstances around us are going our way? But as soon as life becomes the slightest bit turbulent and trials arise, we often allow worries, doubts, and anxieties to creep into our hearts and flood our minds. The words of an old song come to mind when pondering these thoughts. The God of the mountain is still God in the valley. When things go wrong, He'll make them right. The God of the good times is still God in the bad times. The God of the day, He's still God in the night. These lyrics remind us that when life takes an unexpected turn, our trust in God should not be compromised. What seems to be unanticipated twists and turns were all foreseen by Him. And just as He already knew the problems that would arise, He already has a solution just for us. Just as we should not become discouraged and lose our trust in God during difficult times, we should not allow good times to create a false sense of security within us. How easy is it to feel like we can rely on ourselves when life is going right and assume that we do not need God's intervention? Our security is not in the quality of the times, neither is it within ourselves. All of our security comes from God, and we can trust Him with our health, our finances, our children, our marriages, our careers, and every other aspect of our lives. Isaiah 26 and 4 says, Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Whether we find ourselves in good times or challenging times, let's resolve that we will place our trust in none other than Jesus Christ. If you're watching on social media today, we invite you to comment along as you're watching. We also encourage you to share our broadcast with your friends and your family so they can join in with us for this time of encouragement as well. Following our worship, our Bible Training Institute Director, Brother Paul Horton, will join us with some encouraging words from the Word of God. Hear the blessed Savior calling the oppressed. Oh, ye heavy laden, come to me and rest. Come no longer tarry and I your load will bear. Bring me every burden and bring me every care. Oh, come unto me. Thank you for joining us here at the Church of God International Headquarters. 
I would like to share some thoughts today that I trust will encourage you to trust in the Lord in spite of the current situations that we're facing as a nation and even around the world. As you are well aware, because of the coronavirus, many are being drastically affected economically as well as physically. Many are being uh, asked to work from home, some laid off, schools are closing, businesses, restaurants. Uh, many of these uh, situations are affecting us individually. We really don't fully know how far reaching the impact of this coronavirus will affect us. However, in times like these, we must look to God and to his word to give us the encouragement that we need and the direction to help us find his mind and his will and his peace. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 instructs us to trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not to thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. This passage of scripture for most of us is very easy to quote, especially when counseling others, but so often it's very hard for us individually uh, to apply. However, we will never be able to fully trust in the Lord with all of our hearts if we are leaning to our own understanding. Let me share with you a story that I read uh, here some time back. The story was about a fire in which a newspaper photographer wanted to get close in order to take pictures. The newspaper agreed to hire a plane for him at a local airport. When he arrived at the airport, sure enough, the plane was there, ready to go. He jumped in and yelled, take off, and the pilot took off. Once in the air, the photographer yelled to the pilot, make two or three low passes over the fire. The pilot asked, why? He answered, because I'm a photographer. Photographers take pictures. I'm going to take pictures of the fire. The pilot replied with alarm, you mean you're not the flight instructor? Both men made wrong assumptions. The photographer assumed that uh, he was in the right plane. The pilot assumed that the photographer was the flight instructor. It's easy to find ourselves in trouble because we have misplaced our trust. Genesis chapter 3 verses 1 through 6 gives us an example of that misplaced trust and its consequences. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden. But the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God hath said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall ye touch it, lest ye die. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. For God doeth know that the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And the woman saw, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes and the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her and he did eat. Eve misplaced her trust by listening to the serpent in the garden. Adam misplaced his trust by listening to to Eve. The end result of Adam and Eve's mistrust was they were cast out of the Garden of Eden. They lost their intimate fellowship with God and now were facing a death sentence. Samson also in Judges 16, uh, chapter 16, 19 through 21, gives us an example of misplaced trust. He would also find himself in trouble because he misplaced his trust in Delilah. And she made him to sleep on her knees. And she called for a man. And she caused him to shave off his seven locks of his head. And she began to afflict him. And his strength went from him. And she said, the Philistines be upon thee, Samson. And he awoke out of his sleep and said, I will go out as at other times before and shake myself. And he wist not that the Lord had departed from him. But the Philistines took him. And put out his eyes and brought him down to Gaza and bound him with fetters of brass. 
And he did grind at the prison house. The end result of Samson's mistrust was being blinded, bound, cast into prison to grind, and eventually his death. Misplaced trust always ends in tragedy and always brings pain and suffering. Satan has not changed today. He's working the same, trying to cause us to doubt God's word and the promises that God has made to us. Yet no matter how hard he tries, we must not yield to his persuasion, but continue to put our complete trust in the Lord. And the end result will be God directing our paths. And don't we need that today more than ever before? The direction of God in our daily paths. What more could any of us go through than that of Job? And yet he declared in Job 13 and 15, Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Are these difficult times we're facing? Well, let's consider 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 1. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. What are perilous times? The Strong's Greek Dictionary gives us these definitions. Difficult, dangerous, fierce. Also, uh, other definitions include hard to bear, troublesome, harsh. Are these difficult and perilous times that we're facing today? Most definitely. However, what's needed in this hour more than ever before is for us not to focus on the perilous times or the problems that we're facing, but rather to focus on God, the problem solver. Satan, the enemy of our soul, will have us to fear, feel powerless, and to be troubled in mind. But 2 Timothy 1 and verse 7 gives us the insight into God's divine plan and will for us all. For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Paul continues on in verse 12 to give us this example. For the which cause I also suffer these things, nevertheless I am not ashamed. For I know whom I have believed, and am persuaded that he is able to keep that which I have committed unto him against that day. I want to encourage us today to move forward in faith with the same resolve we see in Job 13 and 15, Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, and 2 Timothy 1, 7 and 12. No matter how perilous the times may become, we will believe, we will be persuaded, and we will have committed unto him against that day, this day, this present day that we're living in today. We will then have no worry, no fear, because we will have followed God's divine instructions to trust in the Lord. To acknowledge his ways. To not lean to our own understanding, but in all our ways follow him. If we'll follow God's recipe, surely he will be faithful to his promise and direct our paths. Know this at General Headquarters, that we're praying for each of you, praying for your needs, praying for your problems. We are in this together. We also want to thank you for your continued prayers for all of us here at the international offices as we move forward in faith as well, trusting God for his divine answer and his divine deliverance. May God bless you. May God keep you in the coming hours. And may we put our full trust in God. God bless you. We are so grateful you chose to worship with us today. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord, we encourage you to invite him into your life today. Remember, no matter the circumstances of this life, our God is faithful and we can find the hope that we are searching for in him. May God bless you, your families, and his people all over this world.